The views expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of Saga 960 AM or its management. Live from Toronto to the world. Josh! 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 This is Josh Holiday Live. Talk that rocks. The public needs to be informed. Josh might surprise us. Got an opinion? Dial 647-6-YO-JOSH. When you hear him, you're like, what? Josh Holiday Live starts now. Oh. Yes, hello, 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 hello. Show number two. We've come a long way. <laughs> not, not that long. At what point... As a call-in radio show, can someone say, first time, long time? It's become a cliche on talk radio. People calling in and saying, oh, first time, long time. Essentially, first time calling, but long time listening. At what point in this show, that is now two weeks uh, old, not even two weeks, basically uh, eight days Two shows. How many shows have to be in the book before a telephone caller at 6476-YO-JOSH can say, first time, long time? We'll wait and see. But uh, you can be an early early adopter. You can be one of the uh, early show callers, and maybe you'll become a regular, but only if you're entertaining. As I mentioned, the telephone number is six four six Yo Josh. That uh, if you're if you're not good with the alpha numeric thing, it's six four seven six nine six five six seven four. And you can call any time. We'll, we'll keep chatting. But if something uh, hits you a certain way, you you disagree or you have something to say, you can call any time. And and uh, if you have something relevant, we'll we'll. Try to get you on the air. I'm a little cranky, a little sleepy today. I woke up to the sound and the vibration of jackhammers. I live in a, a, a first floor condominium, just a little one, on a, a small side street. But right across that street, there is a uh, a Toronto Hydro Power Station or Ontario Power Generation, whatever it is. Um. For the next three years, there's they're making improvements to that facility. And so uh, I guess around whatever time you can start in the city, I think it's it's 7.30, I start hearing. <laughs> and because I'm on the first floor and the place they're jackhammering is mere hundreds or less of feet away from me, I could also feel the vibrations. And it's hard to tune that out. And I was too kind of dozy to, to try and roust about earplugs. So I just kind of rolled around my bed. And the weird thing about it is as soon as I was up and out of bed and the rest of the day so far, no jackhammers. So I, I sometimes try and <laughs> attribute motive to things that happen when perhaps there is no motive. But in this case, I, my suspicion, my paranoia leads me to believe that these construction dudes take some small pleasure in starting up the jackhammers as soon as they're allowed in the morning right across from a residential building. Because it stopped, after most people were awake, the, the jackhammering stopped. It could have just been the timing, but in my in my paranoid mind, I'm like, oh, those sons of brr, brr, brr. It is Josh Holiday Live. I am said Josh Holiday. I suppose it would, would be weird if uh, the show was called Josh Holiday Live and it was hosted by a guy named Gary. Gary Banachek here, uh, hosting Josh Holiday Live. That would be strange. 
That would not make sense. Yeah. So uh, on the show today, we, we have an hour. So we're going to try and cram as, in as much as possible. I know some people tried to call towards the tail end of last week's show. And we ran out of time and then our phone kind of cucked up. And so we're going to try and avoid that fate uh, this time around. 6476-YO-JOSH. Uh, a l- little later in the show, we're going to get back into it because we, we kind of got crammed up against the end of the hour last week talking about uh, vaccines and vaccine mandates. Uh, I'll get this out of the way. I, I'm on this station anyway. I'm, I'm sandwiched between uh, two anti-vaxxers and I am pro-vax, pro-mandate. So I'm, 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 part, I'm the meat of an anti-vax sandwich. Uh, I think mandates are good. I think police should be getting getting uh, vaccine mandates. I think healthcare workers should be getting uh, vaccines. If if you're a healthcare worker and you don't want a vaccine, you're in the wrong profession. Your profession is is science based and to help people. We will get into that later. So uh, stand by for that. And if if you're you're angry or you want to call about it, we will take your calls on that as well. Uh, I don't know if you saw this in the news. Uh, there was a movie shooting with Alec Baldwin, I believe it was in, I want to say New Mexico, but uh, it's not super relevant to the story itself. But uh, in a scene in the movie, Alec Baldwin was to shoot a gun and it's a prop gun. They just supposed to fire blanks and something went wrong. And the cinematographer and, and someone else were shot Now, the details are a little sketchy on this. Uh, It might not necessarily be a bullet or or, or something that hit them. I'm I'm guessing maybe it was some kind of uh, shrapnel from a malfunctioning uh, gun shooting blanks. But in the case of the cinematographer, it was deadly and, and she died. And at first, when the news came out, they just reported that there was there was an issue on the set. And that was that. But uh, as the news came out today, it turns out Alec Baldwin was the one that, that fired the gun. And, and stuff like that makes you, makes you think. And, and God, I can't imagine being in a situation where, through no fault of my own, I've killed someone. Like, he... Ha- He's, I don't think in any way is he to blame at all. He he was given what he thought was a, a fully functional prop gun that shoots blanks. He fired it and it ended up malfunctioning and, and someone died at his hands. So I can't imagine the mental anguish that would go through your mind when something like that happens. I think it's somewhat akin to, and, and, and I, I always wonder about this situation too, where there's uh, people who are, are driving the subway and someone decides to jump in front of a, a, a subway train. Yes, you're driving and sure you're going to break, but you have no real time to do anything about it. So it's, it's a situation where, you know, you did it, but you're not necessarily responsible. But you have to deal with the, the anguish of that. And I know that, you know, the the um, the uh, TTC has counseling and, and that type of thing. But but I, I just can't imagine having to deal with that um, that situation, having someone die in front of you and, and, and through, through not through your, not through your actions. I, I should, I should say in the, in the case of the subway driver, cause it's, it's just, there's, there's nothing you can do. He, he's literally in the same situation where it's a passenger, but uh, yeah, I just can't imagine. I did want to make a, a, cor- a correction and point something out. I, uh, I oftentimes my, my mouth works faster in my mind, my mouth is too fast. My mind is too slow. The combination is not good. We were talking about some of the hidden gem television shows that 
people should be checking out. Stuff that kind of flew under the radar, but critically acclaimed. And we talked about the television show, the HBO television show, White Lotus, which is, is fantastic and didn't really fly under the radar, but nonetheless, a very good show. And I talked about another show from the past that Mike White, the writer, director, producer of White Lotus had done called Enlightened. And I even knew it as I was saying it. My head was like, Laura, there's two actresses that I sort of oftentimes mix up, Laura Linney and Laura Dern. And so after the show, I was like, which one did I say? And then I listened and I said, Laura Linney, who is not the star of Enlightened. It's Laura Dern. So (laughs) there's some, some housekeeping, if you will, for the show. Uh, I was watching another show this week that apparently, viewership wise, has already surpassed another pandemic hit, The Queen's Gambit. This one is on Netflix and it's called Made, based on a, a, a book about someone living basically at the poverty line or, or below the poverty line and the real life story of what happened and uh, it's a really, really well done, well written, well acted and certainly eye opening. It's easy to kind of live a middle class life or, or even, even sort of, you know, just to work a Joe job, but not be aware of the real struggle that happens for people living in poverty and, and trying to get out of that cycle. And you certainly, when you watch this, you realize it is a cycle and there's also a cycle of, of uh, abuse as well that they, they deal with. Spousal abuse. Uh, it's worth checking out. It's called Made. It's on Netflix. Also watched a four-part documentary series on Crave called Buried. And another crime story, but this one's very, really strange. It deals with uh, repressed memories and, and the idea that if a trauma, a traumatic event happens in your life years and years later, maybe something will trigger it and you'll be like, you'll remember some event that for all those years had been buried in your memory. And in this case, I'm going to simplify it because it's quite a complicated story, but there's a woman who in her late twenties, remembers something that happened when she was eight or nine years old. She remembers her father killing her best friend, hitting her over the head with a rock. And she basically remembers this incident. She starts putting it together and she goes to the, the authorities and they, they research it and there's a trial and She's on the stand, and and the thing that every crime documentary always does this, where you're like, oh, of course he did it, of course he did it. He's guilty, guilty, guilty. And then the next episode comes, and it's like, oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Then the next (laughs) So you're going back and forth, and and, uh, the way it turns out is, is really quite fascinating. And I don't remember it being a part of the news but there's a lot of footage of her going on Oprah and, and Lisa when that show was around, all, all kinds of talk shows talking about this this thing that happened in her life. And uh, I thought I'd just watch one episode and then save the rest for other days, spread it out. But once you're in, it's very compelling. It's called Buried. It's a crime documentary on uh, Crave TV. The uh, company that made it is Showtime, but it's on Crave. I'm going to have a sip of iced tea now. There's a little behind-the-scenes meta for you. Listen to these eyes. Ah, I am a giant fan of iced tea. The drink and the man. (laughs) So this weekend... Is a very exciting weekend, not just because this show is happening as we lead into the weekend and we, we can even say, hey, it's another holiday weekend right here on News Talk Saga 960 um, because I play recreational hockey in a great league. It's, it's 
kind of an arts league. Lots of uh, actors, radio hosts, uh, musicians, just people with a, a fun attitude. Co-ed. I run a team. I'm a GM of a team, and if uh, if you've if you've been the guy in charge of organizing and running a, a a sports league team, you know what a pain in the butt it is. Most of the pain in the butt is is kind of chasing money, and then secondarily is figuring out who's going to show up for what game. But I have an issue here where. I keep all the the jerseys. You know these really badass, really. They're they're basically run the line between glorious and 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 ridiculous. They're bright yellow and blue checkered jerseys. And our first game is coming up this weekend, so I'm getting everything organized and picking out the jerseys for each player and kind of pinning the socks with them and making sure I'm all organized. And there's one shirt that is one jersey that's missing and i can't it's it's driving me crazy it's a it's a jersey that i know i had in my possession because one of the players who's not coming back this year gave it to me about a month ago and i know i put it in the laundry with another jersey and i'll usually hang dry them but that was a couple of weeks ago, and, and there's been a gap between now and then, and I'm going through all of these jerseys, and I can't find number 26. And it's it's it really is driving me crazy because I have a, a bag that has most of the jerseys in it, and I have a, a very small condo, like tiny. So there's not many places it could be. And I looked everywhere, even places where – it would make no sense for it to be, or it was even too small. These little cubby holes that probably wouldn't fit a hockey jersey. But I, I scoured the place, and it's driving me, it's driving me nuts. The game is tomorrow, and I still haven't been able to to locate it. And I don't want to be that person who's like, "Well, someone must have stolen it," because that always backfires. Ninety nine out of a hundred times, when you when you can't find something, you're like, "Well, someone must have taken it. Someone stole it. You stole it." I. Ninety nine out of a hundred times. You end up finding it, and then you feel bad for trying to blame someone else. My my, my mother did that a couple of months ago. She couldn't find the dry cleaning. She went to go get the dry cleaning in her car, and it wasn't there. And so she started speculating, oh, someone must have stolen my dry cleaning out of my car. But logically, who's stealing dry cleaning out of a car? Uh, It did turn up inside the house. But... uh, if you've seen this jer- if you've seen the jersey somewhere, number twenty six, a bright yellow and blue, just let me know. And give us a call here at six four seven six Yo Josh. That's our number. And we're very proud of it. Uh another th- something that's come out this week is uh from the the provincial liberal leader. He's proposed if he gets in, ranked choice voting, which I think is a good idea. I, I kind of wish that they would do it federally. Essentially, what it means is that when it comes election time, you have however many people, let's say there's five people running. On the ballot, you don't just pick one. You you rank them. So you, you put your first choice, your second choice, your third choice. And in Canada... What ends up happening a lot of the time is there's the liberals and the conservatives, and it tends to flip-flop between those two. And I think part of the reason is Canada is a a left-leaning country. Let's face it, we're, we're, we're socially progressive, and the conservative people tend to be in, in the minority. That's just the way it is. And... So when election time comes around, I know I, I've done this before, and I know a lot of people do this. They get worried that, oh, we, we can't have a conservative come into power. It's going to mess everything up. Look at what happened in the States, and look at what's happening with, with conservatism. It's becoming ex- extremism, so we can't have that. So instead of maybe voting for a different progressive candidate other than, than the liberal candidate, 
we worry. We think, oh God, if we if we vote for say NDP, then we're going to split the vote, and the conservatives are going to get in because the progressive vote is split between a couple of different parties, even the Green Party. And so what ends up happening is is we we tend to flip back and forth, liberal conservative, liberal liberal conservative. A lot of times the conservatives mess everything up, and then it takes a while for us. Uh, uh, progressives to clean clean it up. We get a mess like like Stephen Harper left. Mm, iced tea. So I'm in favor. Of, I'm in favor of it because it would mean that you can vote for who you want to win, but you also have a backup plan as well. And in that way, it, it really is a, a clearer choice, and you don't necessarily have to vote against something so much as for something. Because I think a lot of a lot of Canadians tend to vote against something. It's like, I don't like this. I better vote against it. Rather than, I really like this. I want to. I want to vote for it. So I'm. I'm game for that. This is the Josh Holiday Live Radio Program, and I want this to be a place where I I have the airwaves and and some bandwidth in terms of the the internet stream of this. And it's a bit of a megaphone where if I have a pet peeve, I can put it out there and, and I have a bit of an audience to, to hear it. It's a privilege that I would love to share with you. Because you can complain to your family or, or your, your buddy at the bar or your friend at work about pet peeves. But wouldn't it be better if you could tell a bunch of people, maybe, maybe tell the people you're peeved about how you feel? I'm going to let you do that. You can call this number. Think of it as a megaphone, your megaphone. And you call 6476-YO-JOSH. And you can you can tell me what's bugging you. What's bugging you? I'll give you one to start. Uh, there's a lot of traffic calming measures happening in Peel and in Toronto, and this means speed bumps. And in the old, old world, old school world, speed bumps were mostly on private property, and a lot of times they were basically lumps of either either cement or rubber, and they really like you. You could only go over them maybe like three miles an hour, just really slow. Otherwise, you'd be like thunk thunk thunk. But the speed bumps that are on municipal roadways, public roadways, are made so that you can go this, the posted speed limit on that street. Generally, where speed bumps are, the posted speed limit is 30 kilometers an hour. And you can go over those speed bumps at 30 kilometers an hour, and you, it's not going to feel too badly. It's not going to hurt your car. The caveat, I guess, is if you are driving a, a McLaren or, or some other substitute for a giant wiener, maybe you're going to take the bottom out of your car if you go over the, the speed bumps too quickly. But for everybody else driving like a, just a regular old car, a sedan, an SUV even, you don't have to come to an almost complete stop to go over speed bumps. Go over them at 30 kilometers an hour. That it drives me crazy. I'll be driving behind someone and they'll, they'll come almost to a complete stop in front of a speed bump then go over it slowly. It's even worse if they're driving a, a giant SUV. It's like your car was meant to go over bumps. So, so that's my pet peeve. If you've got something, you've got a beef, something that just, even if it's small like that, that kind of grinds your gears that's what I'm here for. That's what the show is for. Uh, you can come back and you can give me your pet peeves. And uh, as I said later on, we'll talk about vaccine mandates and, and maybe that's a, a pet peeve of yours. But uh, yeah, that's what's happening here. In almost three decades, we have grown from a mere door-to-door flyer distribution company to a full-service advertising agency. Advertising in print media, radio, TV digital marketing etc 
Whether you are starting a new venture or you are already in business, we can help you save hundreds or even thousands of dollars in advertising. Don't waste your time and money by using hit and trial methods in advertising. Give us a call. Prime Distribution Network Incorporated, 9053304071. That's 9053304071. Let's work together for growth. KPA Lawyers is one of Peel Region's most popularly rated law firms on Google, and we assist clients in a wide variety of legal services. Whether you're looking for a real estate lawyer to close your housing transaction, or need a compassionate family lawyer who can help you get through a separation or divorce, KPA will have the right lawyer for you. KPA is not like some other law firms that just refer your case to another company. All of our legal services are performed in-house by our team of experienced and knowledgeable lawyers. Learn more and book an appointment online by visiting us at kpalawyers.ca. You can also call 905-965-6263 between 9am and 5pm Monday to Friday. Once again, our website is kpalawyers.ca and our phone number is 905-965-6263. No radio? No problem. Stream us live on saga960am.ca. You all know that thing you use to send text? Yeah! It also works for actual mouth talking. Get in on the conversation now. Punch 647-6-YO-JOSH to be heard. Talk Dead Rocks, Josh Holiday Live. Yes. We are live. I'm Josh. Good day to you. Good day. <laughs> I'm not good at accents. I'll admit it. Right here. So I mentioned that we would get to this, and here we are. Vaccine mandates. I am for vaccine mandates. And we'll talk about just this is the virus in general uh, to start here. Um, there's news out of Brazil where Jair Bolsonaro, the leader of that country, is being accused of a crime in how he downplayed the coronavirus. He, to this day, is very much in in denial of how to deal with the virus and is an anti-vax leader. And Brazil had a terrible, terrible response to the vaccine, and, and many more people died than should have. And he was in charge, and he was actively anti-lockdown, anti-mask. He was, he was essentially the worst-case scenario for a leader of a country during a time of pandemic. And so now, it's going to be tricky because, because it's very corrupt in Brazil, but they want to try and charge him, and, and the people who are are thinking of this or are trying to think of ways they could do it. But unfortunately, like in, in, in the States under Trump, the attorney general of, of, of Brazil is buds with Bolsonaro. So they're thinking even international courts. And I've said that during the pandemic, when Trump was in office, you would have a decent case of trying him for negligent homicide because his response was terrible basically tr- to try he tried to ignore it tried to 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 brush past it and and many many thousands maybe even hundreds of thousands of people died needlessly because of Trump's poor response to the coronavirus well, let's get to uh Canada Ontario Toronto, Peel. Toronto police have announced that all of their staff, their officers, 
must be vaccinated by December 1st. Now, that's not really a big deal because already they say 97% of, of the police force in Toronto is vaccinated. So it's just a small 3%. Uh, Peel regional police still kind of dithering. There's no mandate yet. They're, they're trying to sort things out in the States. Some of these mandates have hit their deadlines and there's mass police protests. There, there's one group who brought their boots and put them in the, the state capital and some right winger used the phrase cops lost to the COVID mandate. They're not lost to the COVID mandate. They're just bad cops who quit because they don't want to follow the rules. As a cop, you're supposed to enforce the rules, not break them or be against them. And it's a good sign. I think that, that Toronto cops are almost 97% vaccinated or at least have their first dose in the states uh, it's quite a bit worse but there is a silver lining as i mentioned before the fact that these anti-vax cops are quitting is is not a bad thing because they also tend to be bad cops the anti-vax movement is kissing cousins with the white nationalist movement in the states that's not a big secret there the the lines aren't that unclear and I would hazard to say that most anti-vax cops in the States are bad cops. They don't want to get the vax. They, they don't want to obey orders. Chances are that's not the only area where they are not playing by the rules. Doug Ford is perhaps the worst premier we've had in a long time. Certainly since Mike Harris. And I'm really looking forward to the spring, summer, when we can finally say goodbye to the Ford family in politics, hopefully forever. Knock on wood or whatever this wood simulation thing is on my desk. Rob Ford, worst mayor. Doug Ford, worst premier. Even before the pandemic, Doug Ford was terrible and was was doing shady things. But the pandemic really put him to the test and it's a test he's failed miserably. He's put medical advice and scientific advice behind supporting his his big corporate buddies. And he's always a step behind. It takes the public and, and experts and medical experts clamoring for something to happen before finally he's like, well, reluctantly he'll do it. It's often too little, too light. It was like that for paid leave. Science was saying, well, if we want people who are sick to stay home. And the way to do that is to provide for them so that they can still make ends meet while they're sick and not infect other people and dragged his feet on that one for a long, long time. Vaccine requirements dragged his feet on that. And then he dragged his feet on a vaccine passport mandating vaccines to, to, to go into certain businesses. He said, oh, we're never going to have a passport. And then after the time had passed where, where it would have made a lot more sense or months before he ended up reluctantly doing it, he did it. And it's not a great system. It's, it's already flawed in that, you have a QR code, which is essentially this, the, the same as the, your vaccine doc. You have to go on in your, your pictures and figure out a way to, to get it so you can show people on, on your phone or print it out. And people can still show the old vaccine certificate, so, which, is, which is 
more easily forged than a QR code. And the anti-vaxxers aren't the most ethical people. So I wouldn't put it past them doctoring their vaccine certificates to go to the bar, go out to eat. I think they should set a deadline where if you don't have a QR code, you don't get to go in. And hopefully that will come soon. But I, I'm I'm pessimistic because it would take a massive amount of change in mindset from, from Doug Ford to do that. He's always behind on these things. Finally, they've opened up as of, I guess, not as of today. The announcement came today that as of Monday, restaurants and, and gyms and, I guess, health facilities and arenas can open up. But he let the, he let the Air Canada Centre with 19,000 people open up before he would let smaller venues and restaurants open up. So that was a little bit backwards. And... I think part of the problem is when your family, your close family is anti-vax as his daughter is. You're getting it at home in your ear, this anti-vax nonsense. And and I get the sense that he takes those views into consideration. He wants to make sure his daughter can go to restaurants. His daughter can go and do activities. So I'm, really done with with Doug Ford not following the science vaccine for vaccines for kids are coming soon and they've already said well we don't want to do it at schools what why why would you not that's where the there where where children congregate and are all there at the same time why wouldn't you want to do it at the schools where you basically have have all the kids in one place, you can get it done. Why Why make it a thing where outside of school hours, parents have to run around trying to get a drugstore or a clinic? Why? It just makes no sense. It's so stupid. And the other way Doug Ford is not following the science is with health care mandates. Doctors associations, hospital associations are all pleading for him to put in place a vaccine mandate for healthcare workers, and it makes it it makes sense. Like there's, it's just common sense. But Dougie doesn't want to do it. On the plus side, some of the medical companies and organizations are are mandating vaccines on their own. But there's not a blanket rule. If you're if you're in healthcare and you don't want to get vaccinated, I'm of the opinion that you shouldn't be you've chosen the wrong career. Healthcare is a science based career. You rely on science. Your job is to help people your job is to make people better. Vaccines do that. They are science-based. You're in the wrong profession if, if you're in healthcare and you're anti-vax. you got to be one or the other. A healthcare worker or an anti-vaxxer, you can't be both. Do you feel the same way? Give me a call. 6476-YO-JOSH is the telephone number. Six four seven six nine six five six seven four. Back with either your calls or more of my rambling in a sec. I'm feeling the pinch of inflation. Everything is costing me more. I'm really getting worried about my wealth and a possible pullback in the stock markets. What should I do? Listen, have you thought about owning gold? When there's a real inflation threat, gold tends to soar. The last time inflation was a problem in the 1970s, gold rose over 2,000%. I had no idea. Maybe it's time for me to take action and update my wealth strategy. Where can I find out more? I just opened a TFSA at Delta Harbor with real physical gold. 
They're great, and they do all types of registered accounts. Just go to DeltaHarbor.com or call one 335 8645 It's just that easy. Steelheads Hockey is back in a big way. The team makes its long-awaited return to the ice for the home opener on Friday, October 22nd, when the Ottawa 67s visit the Paramount Fine Foods Center. And don't miss the opportunity to see the Steelheads take on their 403 rival, the Hamilton Bulldogs, on Sunday, October 24th. Tickets are on sale now. Visit MississaugaSteelheads.com or contact a Steelheads representative at 905-502-7788 to get your seats today. Welcome to Sports Interaction, Canada's odds maker. Dedicated to giving competitive odds on the teams and sports that matter to Canadians. American football season is here, and SIA has you covered. Get more ways to play on every sport online at Sports Interaction, including the best live in play. Canada plays at SIA. Get in the game at Sports Interaction. Canada's odds maker. Brought to you by Mohawk Online in Canada. Players must be 19 years or over. Play responsibly. Stream us live at saga960am.ca. You got something bugging you? You need to vent? This is your unfiltered megaphone. Dial 647 6 Yo Josh now to be heard. Talk that rocks. Josh Holiday Live. Yes, that's us. That's me, Josh Holiday. Hello. We're talking about vaccine mandates in healthcare, and I should say this: I this has hit kind of close to home, blood relative close to home. That's how close it's hit. I have a uh, a half sister. It's a very it's a very long story. Uh, I, I was adopted, blah, 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 but essentially a half-sister by blood. And always been someone who has been interested in sciences, medicine. There was a time in high school where where she even thought of becoming a doctor. Ended up getting into, into a a healthcare profession, a healthcare type situation, school wise and job wise. And now she sometimes works out of hospitals, sometimes out of clinics, loves her job, got the vax, but then she started dating someone who is an anti-vaxxer. And not just a silent kind of low key. Well, I'm not so sure about this. A a loud anti vaxxer And this is it's sort of a uh, we talked about this last week where where it's a case of of Dunning Kruger, essentially someone who who sees themselves as as this bright, smart, understanding person, but. Because it's an area of expertise that they don't have a lot of knowledge in, they are 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 not are not smart in that area. But they're not smart enough to realize they're not smart enough to know about these things. So this this guy is a, a anti masker, anti lockdown, anti vaxer. He should stay in his lane. Before the pandemic, he was kind of a, a a bro, you know, lifting weights, eating meat, posting on Instagram. But now he's he's part of this anti-vax movement, and and he's his buddy is uh, essentially uh, a low rate cult leader. He's also an, an anti-vaxer and, and delves into libertarianism bordering on white nationalism. And so my house sister is dating this guy and has totally tuned out the family 
and has gone in on the the anti-vax thing. Social media posting stuff uh, about ivermectin and assorted studies, just just the the usual nonsense you you get from anti-vaxxers, not especially well researched. And I think part of it is trying to please this uh, anti-vax boyfriend, but it, it really feels like a cult, like she, like she's locked in. Someone who used to be all about science and and you know following where science leads and medicine and now not so much now sort of parroting this this bro you know the kind of guys i guess who who worship jordan peterson uh bragging about reading books think about people who read books on a regular basis they don't have to go out of their way to tell you they're reading books. They just do it. But this is the kind of, you know, bro guy who's like, look at how many books I read. I've got a book reading challenge. Burr, 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 burr. So the boyfriend's buddy, best friend and, and partner, is the guy who's sort of the, the cult leader. And he's recently moved up to this place like 20 hours north of, of Toronto, way up in northern Ontario got a lodge and is starting what they like to call the, the Citadel. <laughs> and it's, uh, it really seems like the way most cults start is finding yourself a compound. And then it goes from there. Now I want to play some audio. This is the, this is the half sister's, uh, boyfriend. And, and I don't know, maybe I'm overreacting, but this is just a taste of, of his thoughts. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> or so it would seem. Okay, hang on. Let's let me just see. No, all right. I don't have the audio, or maybe I do. Hang on one sec. My apologies. It didn't transfer correctly. Let's try this. Who are these people against us? Who's the unvaxed? Who's the vax? It's it, it's gonna. We're getting very close to like civil unrest. And are you prepared for that? Are you ready for that? Because other human beings are about to force you to do stuff that you don't agree with if you're on that side. Another human being. I don't know. I don't take shit from other human beings. I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge as fast as possible. On to the Citadel for me. That's for sure. I'd rather try to live in freedom for a little bit longer and establish our own place because this is getting insane what's happening here what's going to be happening in cities very soon is not going to be what i think everyone's expecting and that's all because of a select few human beings the leader of all the human beings and our established lines in the sand and the the ground that we say this is uh, our country this is our place these are the borders this is where everyone's in. This is where all these human beings are in. And there's a couple of human beings who are delegating and saying what all these health practitioners need to be instilling. What all these businesses are going to have to require. They're paying a, a human being is incentivizing a billion dollars to have people stop you from going to places of commerce if you can't prove that you injected something into your body. That concept is f***ed. Another human being. A few human beings. It's time to change, guys. It's time to step the f*** up. If you're against this, like, it's time to vocalize your opinions. It's time to get away from those people in your life who are, like, uh, very adamant about it and telling you against it. This, if you guys studied the, the five to ten years before Hitler and the Nazis took power... There are a lot of f-ing parallels going on right now. Oh, there it is. There it is. The the comparison to Nazi Germany, vaccine mandates and masking and lockdowns, comparing it to. That's where most people will lose an argument. As soon as you bring in the Nazis, and it's really offensive and disgusting to try and create a parallel between people trying to 
make the world a better place and trying to make sure less people are dying, trying to protect people, trying to get people to stay safe, trying to compare that to a genocide is, is disgusting. It really is disgusting and offensive. And that is a sample of a uh, Instagram post from the uh, bro that my half sister is dating and, and has sort of brought her into this cult. It's sort of frightening, not the most articulate. And you get this, you kind of understand that this is someone suffering from the Dunning Kruger effect. They just don't get it. They don't know. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, let's see what happens going forward. Hopefully these anti-vaxxers get shunned, or in this case, maybe it's a good thing that they're going off to live in the middle of nowhere. We don't have to shun them. They've shunned themselves. Well, that's just a taste of, of the paranoia and the twisted logic and the um, inability to articulate thoughts. It's scary. If you want to reach this show by telephone, you can do that at 6476-YO-JOSH, 647-696-4444. If you want to listen to previous episodes or you want to re-listen to this episode, maybe you just caught the tail end of it, you can go to joshholidaylive.com. And uh, if, if you want to call, you're hearing this maybe on uh, Saturday. I, I know we're re-airing on Saturday now, and if that's the case, you're hearing this Saturday. Uh, unfortunately, even though we call it Josh Holiday Live, it's not live. But the phone line is always live, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can call the telephone number and leave a message. And I may play it on the show if it's if it's something interesting. And you don't have to agree with me. You can you can leave whatever you want on there and mention you know pet peeves or stuff that bugs you. Leave it on there. Maybe we'll play it on a future show. And if you want to text that number, when the show goes live again uh, next time, you'll get a text back letting you know, and uh, you can call into the show or you can be a part of it, however you feel. And uh, yeah, so that's about it for this edition of Josh Holiday Live. Thanks so much for tuning in. Look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, yeah, don't don't hesitate to call. You can also uh, go to the website, saga960am.ca. And uh, there's some links to social media there and, uh, and all of those different links. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's all there. Anyway, you have yourself a great week. Turn on the lights, open the shades. The show's over, but the conversation continues. On Twitter at Josh Holiday, on the web at joshholidaylive.com, and hear missed episodes on your favorite podcatcher. Talk that rocks. Josh Holiday, live.